Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Gee whiz, here I am. Beautiful day outside, beautiful day outside, and I'm here inside. Why should I be in this dark place? These, these poor folks here, uh, taking them out of it. Uh, taking, we're only going to have a few days of sun, and then we're right back into the rain, rainy season out here. But again, in all due respect, but visit, but don't stay. i got to make sure you understand that part, too. But we've got issues here. The bottom line is very simple. The reason why we're here is that well, the floodgates get ready to be open here, here in, the, in the city of Portland, mm -hmm. in the state of Oregon, in this country, for that matter. We've got a number of folks who are out of work, displaced, a whole number of things. Normally you say, you call them homeless, right? They are homeless, but there's a definition for homelessness. There's a lot of things, and it's not a, it's, it's a negative thing from the standpoint of, of those who got, if you will, feel very comfortable looking at the TV and the whole nine yard and seeing people on the street. I mean, it rained like it was just pouring. I mean, it was pouring down last week or so, big time. And you drove around, these, and these folks have tents all over the place trying to stay dry. In all due respect, where are the bathrooms? <laughs> urinating on the street or throwing the pot on the deal the whole nine years now the one thing about the good rain it did kind of wash it up a little bit aspect of it but the fact of the matter is we're getting ready to go into some of the best weather we're going to be having here in the pacific northwest at least until september mm -hmm. so the floodgate is going to be open folks are going to be all over the place because people are coming here and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. so we need to address this issue bottom line i've been in politics for quite some time i ran for mayor on this issue and I'm still having some concerns. I'm still running for mayor. I have to. I'm a concerned citizen. You got me? I'm the employer. <laughs> and, and so I've hired these other folks who got elected. I call them the employees. And a lot of them don't, a lot of them feel that they are employers, and I'm the, empl <laughs> I'm the employee, yeah. and they're the employers. And it don't work that way. I paid my taxes. <laughs> I yeah. voted, if you will. So it's a, it's, 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 we're going to have to assume some responsibility. So what I thought we'd do this, this particular hour is that I've invited some folks here who've been in this business, who've tried to make a sense of this business, and organized in such a fashion, and had some, had some pushing power aspect of it. But they can go up to a certain point. You know what I mean? You, you're bringing folks in, and, you know, and it's a tough situation. People are looking for housing. They're looking for, 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 for food and and medication and mental illness aspect of it. That's a heavy situation. But then we got a bureaucracy sitting over here that are supposed to be providing a lot of these services. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned that when I was running for mayor, I knew it beforehand. But the fact of the matter is when you go in there, they've got the, they set, if this is what I do, and that's it. And these folks don't even look human to me. I mean, when, I, when you go down there to the Bud Clark Manor situation up there, and it's a sad note, people just need to just go over there. I'm gonna go down there and take some more views. Some more pictures of all these folks. I'm talking about senior citizens, all young people, all kinds of folks, all kinds of people. It's really sad that we uh, are going to be treating folks that way. It's an in inhumane way. But yet and still, we'll go to a foreign country or, or let folks come in and all of a sudden, you know, we got sanctuary city for them. If they got any problems whatsoever, we'll just take care of it. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm going to close my mouth. The bottom line is I got, I got folks here from, uh, <clears throat> from uh, right to was it right to survive? Right to survive. Right to survive. Yes. Right to survive. There we go. Right to survive. And I've got these folks here that are going to be basically, uh, they're, going to, they're going to educate us a little bit more about, uh, about, about the issues that they've been facing with. Maybe talk a little history, too, in terms of the right to survive. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, and then they, I always like to come up with a solution at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking whatever, at the end of the day, we're going to try to give them some ideas in terms of what can we do. And that's a very important piece, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on and invite kind of the lead person in all that endeavor is a, a gentleman that I've known for quite some time, uh, Ibrahim Mubarak. Yeah. Is that right? Did I do it right? You, you did it did right. Did I do it right? You did. Yeah. Ibrahim Mubarak. Okay, otherwise I'm going to call you bro. Then I you call him bro. We, we, everybody yeah. be saying, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know he's, a, he's a very interesting guy. In, in fact, uh, He's been involved in, in a lot of issues and whatever, but the fact is, he took this this situation here and tried to make sense of it. I mean, that's, I really want to take my hat off to you along that line and getting people motivated to be a part of this organization. Mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean? And and uh, and I'll just be very frank with you. You know, when when you think about when you think about when they, when you think about the city of Portland and the state of Oregon, it's supposed to be the whitest state in the in the union aspect of it, and yet and still in, in all this business you hear about racism and this that and that, it's about survivorship aspect mm -hmm. of it. But here's a person who happens to be black like me, and you know, <laughs> right in this sea of all the white folks, <laughs> and he's up here trying to help them. You got me? And so I want to thank you very much for, for, for I mean, staying there. But that's not an easy task to be because cause you can go in from one quarter and they recognize who you are, but if but over this quarter, they don't know who you are. You understand what I'm saying? And the same thing with these women that are here with us today. We've, we've got, let's see, we've got we've got uh, Lisa Faye. Lisa? Mm -hmm. We've got Lisa Faye. She's part of the, the organization. And we've got, uh, what's it? gee, I had my little notes here all squared away. What did I do with that? And that's Ruthie, Ruthie, Ruthie Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Ruthie. Yes. Ruthie likes to do a lot of talking, so we're going to just kind of be a little slow with that a little bit today. Okay. But anyway, making it a little funny, a little bit aspect of it, but, yeah. but it is a serious situation. So, so, so I tell you what, Eman, why don't you, Mabari, why don't you start a little bit about giving a little history of how we got to this, how you got involved in this process. And then we'll start going from there. How's that? Wow, you now you asking me to uh, go way back in my memory. Give me five minutes. I'll give you five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> do, okay, do, do, do in five, five minutes. minutes. Uh, as everyone know, I'm co-founder, along with Jack Tafari, J.P. Cup, Tim Brown, Jada May again, and um, and uh, I forgot his name, Dave. Uh, that's all I know him by. That he was a Native American guy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and Ross Bennett. He was uh, with the Homeless Liberation Front. Okay. And so we wanted to liberate the houseless people from being criminalized, with nowhere to sleep. Mm -hmm. So we would um, meet in people's basements, and uh, we used to meet, it used to be called a Tacoma Cafe on. Um, Third and Burnside, they mm -hmm. had a cafe, and we used to go down in their basements and meet. And people, I don't know, I guess they thought we was forming a terrorist group or something. But mm. what we was, what we was implement trying to say was that it's more differences that live on the streets mm -hmm. that's coming together and that realizing that American dream is not a, a reachable goal or concept. Mm -hmm. for everybody and when I say American dream I'm saying that you know you graduate from college I mean you graduate from high school go to college get married have 2.5 children buy a house with a white picket fence and a dog to go by wow that's the dream that they portray to us since kindergarten that's the right, goal right, you right, got right, to reach and right. if you don't reach that that's goal that's American dream yeah, yeah you're a degenerate mm -hmm. well what if I don't want to live in a house what if I don't want to get married what if I don't have want to have two children not a point five child you know what i don't mm -hmm, want a, mm -hmm. a dog what if i want a cat you know that concept you, you can do a lot of things away but that is the statement of americanness and getting that american dream now if you don't get that are you american if you don't patronize that dream are you american so what started to happen was they the capitalism separate people by their social status, your upper class, your middle class, your lower class, and no class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So people start getting greedy and greedy and greedy, getting a nest egg and wanted more. The politicians start developing the terrible tools, you know, two houses, two cars, two bank accounts, two wives, two countries, you know, like um, Trump and Russia is doing right now, you know. So in doing that greediness to stop leaving room for other people to try to achieve that goal and start making it harder for people to achieve that goal by not giving uh, the pay rate, the pay per hour compatible to the economic rise of clothes, food, housing, and, and education. So people start making a choice. What do I do? Do I live in a... a small and expensive or do I live with my parents and pay for my way to college or do I uh, get an apartment you know you have the choice do I uh, go here or do I get on food stamps so I can eat so I can do that mm -hmm. so all these decisions which people was inadvertently being forced to make a decision on 
So with that, we had a flux of uh, homelessness, houselessness, uh, transient, uh, hobo, bums, tramps, by any name, what you want to call it, it's people living on the street. So we saw that it didn't respect no gender, no social status. It didn't respect no ethnicity. It didn't respect, respect no spirituality, you know, because you saw Muslims living on the street, Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, you saw white, black, Asian, Native American, mm -hmm. Hispanic. You saw tall people, short people, skinny people, fat people, people with hair, people with no hair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so it was all due that these people are drug infested and lazy. Dude. So we wanted to bring out the truth on why people really live on the streets. Most people, 75% of the people that live on the streets are forced to live that way due to the economic situation. So we formed and got together and fought and formed Dignity Village. And, and What year was it about? Uh, 2001. 2001. Yeah. That, that was on the Burnside. Right, right there on Burn, Is that the one on Burnside or then the Chinese? No, that's Right to Dream too. Yeah. Dignity Village on 33rd and Northeast Southern. It's been going on for 17 years. Okay. okay. 17 years okay. now. And 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 so it was. We got our next it our next it, which a comfortability, which was a peer led based ran operation where houseless people help other houseless people. And they was beginning to uh, put their differences behind them and help one another, no matter who you were, as long as you came and you needed help. And after that, it, it was the comfort level of, of being there. And while other people was living on the streets and we had that one entity. Mm -hmm. And so I left Dignity Village to come back out into the streets and I saw that it was even more houseless people. And what I saw was uh, a lot of runaway children, a lot of families living in cars and hiding in vacant buildings. I didn't want their children taken away. Uh, at this time, the LGBTQ community was getting bigger, and some, some, some people was leaving their family because they wasn't accepted, and they was going where they was accepted. Then you have your runaways from foster care, and then veterans coming back mm -hmm. from the war that they wasn't properly uh, taken care of. They was living on the streets. People, uh, they closed the mental institutions down, and you had people walking yeah, the street yeah. that needed help with their mental capability. And you just have people that uh, created a crime that wasn't allowed to get back into the mainstream the productive society. So you got all these groups in the streets coming together and we mm. start seeing an intersectionality of things. Well, probably what year was yeah. that about? When you well, left? well, when I left Dignity Village after where we started in 99 mm -hmm. and then it was shortly after 911, I think a year after 911 when okay. I finally left and because then during that time when I walked the streets, people would walk with me because they was afraid I was going to get attacked. Mm -hmm. And and I wasn't afraid because I was saying, well, people know the difference between a terrorist, you know. But but now uh, we we stereotype that if you dress like this, right, you can right, be okay. a terrorist or right, something right, like right, that. Right. But but you ask a Native American, ask them who's the real terrorist, you know. Mm -hmm. You ask them, so who knows what a terrorist looks like? I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, but people want to put this country want to sell by sex and fear, so they put in fear in everybody, and then why they put in fear in people, the prices keep going up and the pay rate mm -hmm. stay down. People study hitting the streets and hitting the streets, so uh, I got tired of listening to a lot of people's stories and seeing a lot of people hit the streets, a lot of people crying, a lot of people starting to self-medicate because they meet in depression and stuff. So I had $10 and my bike was my only transportation. So I rode my bike to Kinko's and made $10 worth of flyers. Hey, I want to start, I want to start a new organization that would advocate for the houseless community mm -hmm. and teach them their three rights, their human constitutional and civil rights. And voila, that's 
how Right to Survive got started. And after Right to Survive got started, we decided it was going to be a direct action group bringing attention to the cause of houselessness. And one of our first direct action was um, at pre foreclosed houses. Mm -hmm. Then we started getting into abandonment of schools that they could utilize these schools to open up uh, shops where people can learn how to get their GED or learn and how to fill out applications. What happened to that program when you were doing that and approximately when we were trying to advocate? It, it's, still, it's still going on. Still going. Yeah, and, and then one of our biggest uh, direct actions, well, we did Pitch a Tent, which is coming up, and one of our biggest direct actions was Right to Dream too, And then now they become their own entity, and we go to different cities and states and helping uh, houseless people organize Places like uh, Digney Village and Right to Dream 2 and Hazelnut Grove and Forgotten Rams. And, and, and that's the chain effect, how when people start seeing and start believing in that concept, mm -hmm. it can happen. And so that concept is leading from uh, villages and tent cities to tiny homes mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where, where it's supposed to be for people with low income to afford to live at and see and I'm going I know I'm probably going I'm scattered all over the place but I'm trying okay. to do the connection on right. what's happening right. now mm -hmm. and now the capitalist is taking over the tiny homes they selling them now and it's not affordable for people who was made for they can afford anymore mm -hmm. so right to survive is a direct action that go out into the streets and teach the houseless community with their constitutional human and civil rights. Okay. And I, what I'm hearing also, too, is that, like I said, you can take the issue up to a certain point, mm -hmm. and you can't go beyond that other point. Right. You, you, that's right. fair? Am I fair? That's fair? You're fair. Now, the thing is that, so the response back from the, let's say, the, the corporate community or the, the leadership community, and in this case, the elected officials, the folks who are pretty well set up to respond to the majority. Right? Mm -hmm. You got my point? Mm -hmm. Their response is, like you said, I'm, I'm thinking about that with reference to the little houses, because I noticed that there was one of the commissioners had suggested coming up with five or six houses or something like that, an uh, experimental piece at a tune of $75,000 a hit, mm -hmm. and then putting it in the back of somebody's house. Well, the first thing I thought when I, when I heard that piece mm -hmm. was that, okay, fine, if I'm just thinking from a business standpoint, Oh, I'm a, gee, I'm going to be give me a little extra hut yeah. in the back of my house, but yeah. without the problem. Yeah. And then I'm going to select someone that I know, you got me, and I want to cop that 24, 24 hours a day, <laughs> you got me, in routine. And, and then at the tune of $75,000, you say, well, what, what's going on? But then you go right there to Home Depot to a certain degree, and you can pretty well get a nice little spot and then get... I put something together with the tough the, shit. Tr 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 <laughs> the, the, the uh, uh, with the unions or whatever, yeah. or with the kids if they had the, mm -hmm. if they had OJT or something like that, and, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying just just kind of make it right. But the key is that this house in the back of another house. So so you got you got all these people out here that are hurting trying to make their make their payments, mm -hmm. and they say, well, gee, I'd like to have that house because if I had that house, I can get me another renter, if you will. Are they going to be paying me for the rent part too? So, well, I'm, going, just, I'm going, just throwing this out. Yeah, that, we're that going to piece. meetings at City Hall and listening to the commissioners and mm -hmm. mayor mm -hmm. create this exclusionary zoning. We it, a lot of uh, ideas had came up, like if if you have uh, a senior citizen that's getting SSI or retirement and they can't really afford to keep their house, instead of gentrification coming right, in right, and taking that right. house, mm -hmm. they would pay for that person's family to stay in that house in order so you get people off the streets because a lot of people don't live in, at home because they don't have no money to help with the rent and stuff. So if you can ha have your child, your grandchild, niece, nephew, uncle, whoever, come and stay in that house and, and the city or some organization is paying for them to stay there, then people can keep their house and the neighborhoods won't get destroyed. or the tiny house thing like what you're saying mm -hmm. putting houses in the backyard and letting people stay in there for five years and then you're kicking them out evicting them yeah. and that and that tiny house belongs to those people who own that house mm -hmm. so i mean people and and what people going to do in that third year 
they're going to have to start thinking where to go. They're going to be back on the street again. Mm -hmm. So this is nothing but a tease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, see, again, like you were making the point, is that uh, within our system, mm -hmm. before all this was going on, that was going on right now, it was called the Housing Authority of Portland. <laughs> And their job, if you will, was to accommodate all the issues yeah. that we're talking about. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You go in, you fill out the voucher aspect of it, you get on the list. And in fact, when I was in the quote, <laughs> I won't get in that end of it, but I was kind of like, in the, I saw the thing coming out myself. Mm -hmm. And then taking advantage of the Northeast Corridor aspect of it, you can get those houses for a little or nothing aspect of it. And the idea is to go in and, 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 and carry the paper and mm -hmm. sell the house to the person mm -hmm. on a lease option purchase. Yeah. Only the first month, last Option. month, cleaning deposit, got me? Yeah. And get them started, get them to the bank, and tell the bank, okay, fine, you're going to de develop that credit, they pay their bills through the bank, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You know what I mean? And then, so I took that same concept to the city, mm -hmm. housing authority, Portland aspect of it. I said, what you need is an input and output program. You know what I mean? Mm. They, they, they'd gotten a bunch of houses, and I, I did the show here. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of houses from another developer that was basically just getting all the houses and was just going to basically sell them, you know, and then blah, 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 routine. But at the end of the day, the city owned the properties and whatever. And then they were basically saying, okay, fine, uh, we're just going to, we're going to just house the folks right then and there. But mm -hmm. the key is that they had apartments already there. Mm -hmm. And my thought was, okay, fine, you got to train a person how to be responsible for a house before you put them in there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, so exactly. You know, first you got to see whether or not they can rent a piece of property and take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then during that particular time, you try to find them a job so they could pay the rent exactly. to a certain degree. So exactly. you start off maybe getting 100% subsidy, but at the same time, you said that after a certain period of time, if you if you meet this particular goal, then you got to pay a couple of dollars just to get yeah. understanding because it, your, your, your American dream is to own this piece of property. Yeah. But you got to go through these steps to be responsible. Well, it made a lot of sense as far as I was concerned, but the bottom line is that they, they weren't me. You, you, that, that makes sense. you see what I'm saying? Wait, so the wait, housing authority, yeah. I guess the only point I make is that the housing authority of Portland mm -hmm. should have been doing what you were suggesting you did, mm -hmm. you guys did. That was their job. Well, well, now they, it's not public housing. No, no. They're yeah. privatizing they it now. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, I don't know if you all out there read the book, The Broken Window Theory, mm -hmm. on how they make a uh, neighborhood or community look less attractive and then the property value go down and yeah. down and down yeah. and then the developers come in and say oh we're going to buy this property cheap and we're going to gentrify it to look better and pretty and stuff like that but then this mad rush here at the portland i think i don't know if the the count is still right but i know it was a hundred and eleven people moving here a day oh yeah Oh, yeah. And so where's those 111 people a day that was inside going, mm -hmm. that they being pushed out mm -hmm. their house, mm -hmm. to the streets? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this system or this chaos, this madness, this craziness was programmed for people in the higher echelon, the higher mm -hmm. upper class, because what, and, and you can't blame them. If you own the house and you can, you can, evict people with no cause just because you, they was they had that head on it if they didn't like your head you can get evicted and then you can raise your rent triple quadruple times of what you pay, what you was renting to to the person who you didn't like because his head i mean why wouldn't anybody in their common sense why wouldn't you? that's you know because you got to keep up with the flow at the face value thing mm -hmm. so everybody's jumping on this bandwagon with this no cause kicking people out and then the people that's coming here, they have to pay like, I mean, if you was paying 500 a month, some people, yeah. I, I think a studio now is going for 1500 a month, mm, mm, you know? Mm, mm, and, mm. And, and then they tearing down, building up all these high rises and they not making affordable housing to people economic uh, status. Mm -hmm. They just making housing to what they think, trying to build the price of housing. And when I say housing, I mean apartments, I mean condominiums, I mean houses, I mean even even uh, trailers or or Sorry. camper parks. Yeah, you have to be a certain uh, uh, years if you if you seven years older, 
you have to leave that that trailer park or that camper park and buy a new one or you got to go can't mm-hmm. live that no more so everything is going up and it's not affordable and that's what's happening in our housing crisis and the, and and then when the hb8 am i saying that right hb8 when they uh stop that and hud uh started taking over i think they they even privatizing hud and and people are the still the prices are going up and people are getting vouchers to pay rent but from living in the street inadvertently you're going to be criminalized while you want to or not you're going to be criminalized yeah, and right. that's sleeping that's one of the biggest thing mm-hmm. people most people being criminalized for is sleeping with on the sidewalk mm-hmm. and we and you go to get you got this voucher and now you want to go get housing that landlord that agency looking at your yeah. record and say you got a criminal record yeah. we're not going to let you in yeah. so to see some of the people is doing good with giving vouchers but they still not expunging the minors offensive that people did so they can get housing mm-hmm. you know again uh, along that same line you know there there are some good legitimate folks who, who own their house and kind of say well, look i need some help and will take someone in mm-hmm. but there's no vetting process to make sure that that person do the right thing sometimes and sometimes the bad will be that will be looked upon to, to use it if you will to counter some of the mm-hmm. things you're talking about right. that system should have been in place mm-hmm. because I, I i went down and i visited the uh uh, the eviction process, you know, when you go to yeah. go to court and this, that, and yeah. the other, yeah. and 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 looking at maybe two or three seniors just sitting there, you know, just just saying, "Gee whiz, I can't get the person out the house. I I brought him in, and I, I just don't know what to do, and you know, and et cetera, et cetera." But there was nothing within the system to take care of that, and and, and you would think that's something that they should do, and then the judge gets his guidelines in terms of this is what you do, you know, if you haven't met this, this, that, and the other, guess what? You got to pay. Or if not that, you got to be evicted, and then you got a developer uh, sitting on the steps, if you will, at the courthouse, saying, "Well, I'll buy the place," and then it gets auctioned off, and you got to pay it cash. So if you ain't got no cash, you can't buy it. And the reason why I'm making that point, especially in Oregon, we we had a precinct. I mean, it was a beautiful city, you know, nice and clean, the whole nine yard aspect of it. But remember now, the baby boomers now are having kids, and these kids are graduating from college. Yeah, the high tech situation aspect of it. Can can, and, can we go one day to what they call the millennium now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a saint, a I'm a sanctuary millennium. <laughs> See, but but the point is, about I remember about four or five years ago, uh-huh. and when 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 Californians were coming in because they wanted to get out of out of California yeah. because gee whiz, I mean. In all due respect, the Mexicans are just taking us over. They, 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 I mean, rules every corner. So they said, I got a million dollar house, sold his million dollars, come over here in cash, mm-hmm. bought him four houses, stayed in one, rehabbed the others, rented it out, and today he got his million dollars back. Yeah. And he was able to sell these houses five, six hundred thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. See, so my point is that that's there too. Yeah. So, so yeah, the system no supposedly, no. hopefully, would be set up to be able to look at that. Now, if I saw it five or six years ago, and we're talking about home, because there was home homelessness then to a certain yeah. degree, but they not at this degree aspect of it. Right. We knew right. what the jobs were about. We knew that the fact that the housing authority had so many vouchers left, and they needed more units, but they didn't react to it. In right. fact, they closed it down not exactly. too long ago. They exactly. closed it down. They could have actually bought all of those houses way back when too. Exactly. But the, but the point of the matter is, is that in all due respect, you know, you, you get, and I hate to say it this way, but you get elected leaders, and they, they get elected, but they don't have the background. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't they, have the they, foresight. It's just money in their own pocket. They don't have the background. You know, and in all due respect, and I, and I think about the city council, and, and I think about Dan Salzman. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember meeting this young man, mm-hmm. and I worked on his campaign the first day, so to speak. But they was, his dad was in the housing business. But the bottom line is that he got elected, but he had a he had a focus on what he was going to do with kids and this that. Mm-hmm. But then after that, all shifted to real estate. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm just saying, but the, the system doesn't uh, just doesn't check it. Now he may, he may be a nice guy, mm-hmm. but the fact of it is, he's not there to just benefit on his own. We are a capitalist society. Yeah. But the key is that he was in charge of housing at one point in time, and then you had Fish was in charge of housing, and the, but they were supposed to take care of those. They should have bought all those houses and gotten some more units, if you will. You got me? Um, and make sure that you check and balance and know who lives in the, in the city. How many senior yeah. citizens are living here? 
and how many how many are still owing monies and et cetera, et cetera. Those stats should all be available, just like we talked about this yeah. piece. How many vets do they have in the mm -hmm. city of Portland? I couldn't get anyone to answer anything. How many how many people that are homeless today? No mm -hmm. one knows. No one knows. No but, one but, knows. But, but we know an but, estimate. What of, is that number? Of, but what uh, is the number that they throw uh, around today? Well, the, the well, you if you ask the um, and time count people, they say it's about 1,500. If you ask us that's on the streets, we say it's 3,000 or more. About 3,000 or more, okay? Yeah. Okay, do they know the stats of these folks? Do they they get, you want them? Yeah. Come on, you, don't, you, don't, you want this? <laughs> no. You get on this conversation, just Yeah, start. it's not just me. Well, what, what's, <clears throat> well, what do you think? Well, the problem with the count is that they only count people that are in shelters. In shelters only? They don't count people that are couch surfing or rent or using someone's spare bedroom or living out of their vehicle or are tucked away in the bushes in, in right. the hillsides um, or laying on the streets right. downtown. So the number, you can times it by three or four mm -hmm. to get more of an right. accurate count mm -hmm. of how many people are houseless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's not even throwing in their school children that are houseless too. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the issue that there's a lot of seniors that have subsidized housing. And as, subs as the housing prices of the, the units go up, if, and your social security's not going up too, right. then you get an eviction notice because you can't make that right. minimum 30% yeah. that you mm -hmm. need to make. Mm -hmm. So now we have seniors that are coming out onto wow. the streets wow. too. And you're right, as we had discussion earlier, a lot of veterans are n not aware that there are programs out there right. that they can access, mm -hmm. or they go out there to access the programs and they're denied for one reason or another, mm -hmm. a dishonorable discharge, right. um, they need more treatment than just a roof over their mm -hmm. head. Um, so, or they've caught a criminal record during mm -hmm their time right, on the right, street. Right. So there's all these barriers all these that barriers. Are, and then you're right, the housing is not keeping up with mm -hmm. the number of people mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Uh last estimate we needed what, two years ago we needed twenty three thousand units. Right, right, right. <laughs> not as and want. that was two or three years ago? Yeah, right, 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 right. It's wow. doubled or tripled by Ooh. now. I tell you so. what we'll do. Let's take a short break and let's mm -hmm. get right back here because we got a lot to talk about, okay? Okay. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Yeah. Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome back, folks. We're talking about homelessness. We're talking about the floodgates getting ready to open up here in the city of Portland. Summer's here, all in all due respect. And uh, well, I don't know what that number was last summer, but it was huge. <laughs> and folks were all over the place. People were scrambling all over the place. And, and folks were trying to provide housing on a little quick and temporary basis. Everybody, I think the politicians were wanting to look good. To, and then a lot of the developers made money off that deal if they had a vacant property. You know, they got they, they got their properties improved, you know. But the bottom line is that now we got a bigger problem than that. Folks are going to be coming here all over the place. I, I even noticed that down at Delta Park aspect of it. They, yeah. they, they tried to clean out. I, I went took some photos of that deal, and I noticed the sheriffs involved in the process. And they basically took all those folks out of there because that was a place that was a dog patch. And a lot of the folks were complaining about the fact that they, they couldn't take their dogs to run. And so let's clean them out. So they cleaned everybody out. I mean, today, in fact, I only saw two of them there. And the grass are growing higher. And, uh, they, in fact, they were up there looking for needles and stuff like that, you know, trying to clean that surface so somebody could bring that dog there on a, on a not a rainy day 
and let the dogs run around and then pick the dog up and leave. See? And then the guy is sitting up there over there by the highway department. They're sitting up there at the highway right off of I-5, right before you get to Jansen Beach aspect of it. They got a big, big, big tent aspect of it aspect of it there but people trying to stay out of the weather aspect of it yeah. so we got a problem is it it's going to be worse than that mm -hmm. and and so and i'm not trying to let, i'm letting you know that it is a problem and uh, we've elected folks to take care of those problems mm -hmm. that's their job so here today i'm i'm talking with some folks that are right at the front line of this piece but they can just take it up to a certain point mm -hmm. they can't go up to uh, beyond this particular point they've done as best they can so now where do we go from here Okay, and just before we broke, uh, we broke. We were talking about uh, uh, well, well, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa was sharing us a bit about the kinds of folks that are out there on the street and whatever. And, uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna bring in uh, Ru Ruthie, Ruthie Benjamin, and uh, she's a senior citizen. Yes, I am. And I take no. it that you are familiar with the homeless program aspect of it, yes. like yourself, maybe. Yes, I am. Okay, talk about yourself a little bit about <laughs> being homeless. Today. I came up here from California mm -hmm. mm. Um, in 2010 because there was a cheaper room for me to live in than in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I'd been living in rooms for quite a while, uh, ever since I'd been evicted I, due to a roommate not being able to pay their share of rent. Mm -hmm. And then it became very hard to even get a place. After wow. you're evicted, you've got that on your record. Yes, so I was yeah. living in rooms and um, I finally came up here and I didn't realize how low income I'd become. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize there were options for me. And I became pretty afraid that I was gonna end up on the streets myself. Mm. I was living in Beaverton with the room then. And somebody, a friend of mine, told me that I could probably apply for housing. So that I did and I got my apartment three years ago through Catholic Charities Providence mm -hmm. House. Mm -hmm. So I pay 30% of my rent, which is really what basically everybody should be paying for mm -hmm. your budget. Mm -hmm. And so I'm surviving and thriving there and I'm very happy and I feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I want that for all my friends who live out on the streets mm -hmm. and have to suffer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what they do because just a week on the streets mm -hmm. oh. will change a person <laughs> and stress a person out so much. As for the veterans, I had a good friend who passed away from cancer. He had frostbite. He'd been living on the streets for like 15, 17 years. And he was a good friend of mine. His name was Hayseed. Um, he had frostbite one year and ended up having to go to the VA. He never knew that he was eligible for those benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All that time, he'd gone and gotten his hernia worked with, but he didn't feel he could go inside because how am I going to recover on the streets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so he never had that done. Then when he had frostbite, he had to go to the hospital, and that's when they found out he had uh, lung cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, once he'd found out, he was really hoping that once the social security kicked in, right, right, right. he'd be able to right. go ahead and, and find a place mm -hmm. and live inside. Mm -hmm. So at that time, it was our both of our goals to find right, one of those right. places right, right, right. That we, where we would be safe. Mm -hmm. um, he was a very generous man, a poet, and he'd always do work around City Hall. He used mm -hmm. to scrape the, the moss off and things like that and sweep around mm. City Hall mm. while he slept outside mm. there. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, you make a good point in regards to the vet. And that's a, that's a problem that the VA is, is, is falling through the crack, meaning that a lot of times you see the sign, the guys that are out on the streets, the sign say, I'm a vet, I need some help, that type of routine. And I made my point, a lot of times I just stop. Mm -hmm. I just stop, I just get out of my car, stop the traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say, man, are you a vet? He said, well, yes, I'm a vet. Well, you, do you have an ID? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well yeah, I don't have no ID. Well, homeboy, I know you, you got to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, but the bottom line is that if you're a vet, uh, you, you, I'll get you, my, take you my car and I'll, I'll take, take you down there and you get your services. Right. You got services coming. But you got to have your ID. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you down to the place to get the ID. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, don't la if you don't have your last four, your, your Social Security number, 
then you, you, you're playing games with me, see? Yeah. And I ain't got time for that piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, in all due respect, you need to go over here. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. As far as I'm concerned, the Portland Police Department should do just that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If they see a person says, I'm a vet, they should pick the person up, find out if they got an ID. Just like I have. I have an ID. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn if you're a millionaire, you can still go get you an ID. Mm -hmm. You may not get all the services, but you got an ID card. But but Bruce, for a houseless person, that's very, very hard I know. to do. I know. It's a good ID. I know. And and when and when you've been living in a uh a tent and and the sheriff come take your stuff away mm -hmm. your if your id and all identification that says you that person who you say you are is taken away you, you in limbo you can't you can't get food stamps you can't get no you can't get going to the movie house you can't go yeah, well you that, can't go right, nowhere right, really right, without right, id right. and this society has become so uh transparent to people's security people privacy is ridiculous the most private thing that you have you have to give it up in order to get something that's why you have all these identity there yeah. you shouldn't have to give up your social security number in order to go into but, a but shelter it, but you shouldn't it, have to give up your social okay. security number in order to but, but buy a hat but let me share this, yeah but let me share this with you though uh -huh. with the military it's kind of interesting because when i was in the court they gave me an id number to remember okay one nine eight three five two four i still remember mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. But they changed it, because everybody gets a social security number when you get a, when you when you yeah. come into this world, so to speak. Yeah. But they change it to the regular social security number, mm -hmm. so they ask you for your last four. But they got that on file. They got that on they got that on files on computers. Mm -hmm. They right. have your photo with that number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I'm saying the system is there. But if, but if that, the that's police would vets, just, But what if you're not a vet? No, but what I'm just saying. Yeah. But let's yeah. take care yeah. of it. My point is that yeah. maybe we can do the same thing exactly. for a person before they get to the point it's so bad. Exactly. You get my point? Exactly. Put their photo. A lot of times, I don't want my photo. No, no, no. Put because you don't want nobody to steal your stuff anyway. Yeah. Put your photo yeah. up there. So when a cop picks you up, he puts it. Get it on the computer aspect of it. There's mm. your last four aspect of it. There's your photo. If he's lying, bang. Mm. But if the cat is having a problem, take him over here mm. or take him over here. That's the problem that I think the biggest problem we have. We don't know who's on the street. Exactly. And that's exactly. what we need to do. That's that's what we need to put our efforts in right now. Mm -hmm. So as people sure. start coming in, it's kind of like saying somewhere where you got to check in. If I was me, I'd say you have to check in over here if yeah. you're gonna come in the city of Portland. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You know, just check in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because I want to know, I want to make sure you get taken care of. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want you sleeping on the streets. I don't want you getting cut and this, that, and the other. I mean, I don't want you this, this, that, and the other. Anyway. Well, well, when you say check in, that's going back to the uh, sundown law, though. I mean, if, uh, uh, in order for a person of color, to, in, in the past, I think in 2010. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, very yeah, familiar yeah, with that. I'm yeah, there. when people I'm just have saying, to I'm ask trying permission to... to come here. Right. And if you stayed overnight, you were supposed to turn yourself in and get whooped. And this was just, oh, no. yeah, yeah, this was just taken yeah. off. The, not, uh, not that when, was every six months. Yeah, but see, every but six see, months. My, okay. But see, but like I said, we're, we're again talking about solutions. A person right. comes into this town. Mm -hmm. Okay, all I'm just saying, if they check in somewhere, this is not about going to jail. It's kind of like, <laughs> because once you make the point about checking in mm -hmm. and a person you, get, you educate the person now in all due respect if a, if a person a person has break you know a jump bail or this that and the other they know yeah. you got me you yeah. see what I'm saying now yeah. if you're homeless and you jump bail in all due respect you want to take care of that anyway now, let's solve the problem because if you don't solve the problem you're going to beat up on somebody else mm -hmm. the, the blah 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 and I'm, I'm just saying we need to talk again about solutions too. I mean, right. we, we, that's a very, very important piece. Because I know that's what that's what you guys have been doing. Yeah, yeah. We're, you we're organized to get solutions. Right. Where Lisa and Ruthie are taking a part of Right to Survive called the Ambassador Program, and they coming up with solutions. If you all want to talk about. Yeah. That. Okay. Ambassador Program. What is, What is that, Lisa? You want to start off? <laughs> sure, I'll start off. Okay. Uh, we network with different communities around Portland. We meet in their libraries, in their churches, in their uh, schools, in their community centers. And we have uh, community dialogues with housed people and unhoused people. Okay. Um, and we break down some of the stereotypes and myths about houselessness. Uh, we talk about the creative ingenuity of houseless people. We talk about how they were somebody before they lost their housing. Um, 
and give neighborhoods a chance to vent and and say, you know, well, this is some of the problems that are in my neighborhood. What can we do to fix it? How can we help? Okay, okay. Um, and and kind of bridge and the gaps between those that are houseless and those that are housed. Mm -hmm. And another way during those sessions that. Uh, we have positive interactions is we bring an art component whether uh, this past year we've been making clay tiles for the new right to dream 2 location however this coming year we're going to be doing like watercolor painting and then have a big exhibit at the end of the year mm -hmm. and it's a way of of Meeting when you're doing art, you're having fun, you're laughing, right, right, you're right, breaking right, right, down right, right, right. all your hostilities. Right, 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 right. So it opens doors, it helps bin, bring in solutions, right. and fosters creativity. Like the tiny house concept, maybe not one for your backyard, but if we have tiny house communities within each neighborhood, you have people in tiny houses in a community area, maybe on one or two lots of land that are adjoined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people have a sense of ownership and pride in the mm -hmm, tiny house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It might be 200 square feet. Mm -hmm. It might be real small. It might be smaller in this studio space. But it's a, a space of their own that they can have ownership and pride in mm -hmm. and say, okay, I'm, I'm finally comfortable. I'm finally safe. I'm finally dry. I've gotten rest. I'm getting my health back. Mm -hmm. Now I can look for work mm -hmm. or education mm -hmm. or I know I can get social security. Mm -hmm. I can now feel comfortable applying mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And I have community support mm -hmm. because I'm in a neighborhood mm -hmm. where people are now looking out on my behalf in favor mm -hmm. of my being there mm -hmm. instead of like, oh, I, that's on sightly. I don't want that mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Well, see, You're seeing me as a neighbor again, <laughs> not as... But that's as, where the system is so important. You've taken it up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And then rather than them coming back, going out and, and solving the problem and coming back, meaning that from the standpoint, you got the American dream of all these other folks. <laughs> they got the American dream. I don't want nobody messing with my place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's their job to go... Yeah. And deal with the issue, and then and then basically say, okay, fine. This is how we're going to deal with this situation here. When they get back to you, it's just basically, okay, fine. Look, we got we gonna we gonna plan for fifty of them. Uh, now let's let's talk about the criteria for these folks getting in here. Yeah. But that's yeah. not happening. Yeah. If you have to go out there and talk to these same folks, you got my point. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at it from that standpoint. I'm sitting up there saying, I got my American dream. <laughs> you know, you're the mindset. Well, gee yeah. whiz, what's what's wrong with you? You you lost your job. You get to work just like I did, etc. That system has to take care of that. Yeah. To solve yeah. those problems. Yeah. Because you, you're not going to be because all this does is just add fuel to the fire. I, I, well, how are they going to come in here? <laughs> And I'm going to be paying the taxes for it. Cause that's the other thing, too. I'm going to be paying the taxes. My point is that the system has to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So when they say it's 50 unit, 100 unit, they also know how many placements they're going to have. Yeah. They've already vetted that out from the standpoint who's going to be able to acquire those housing, whatever. Not just sit up there in a political gathering aspect and say, well, we're going to do seven experimental houses. They don't even know who's going to be moving in the house. Yeah. And then the cost, who's going to build them? I mean, be creative, you know what I'm saying? We, we need voc ed in these schools. I mean, I come from That's a right. voc ed standpoint. Mm -hmm. And those kids could have been actually doing those houses in school and learning something. Exactly. And there are projects around yeah. town in the high schools. Starting. Yeah, but, but understand what I'm saying. are building these houses, and I guarantee you they ain't spending $75,000 right. a house right. to see, build them. Now, what you just said, <laughs> see, that's what yeah. we that should have been the program. Yeah. Exactly. But see, but the key is that letting you go out there and talking to these folks, I mean, they'll sit down and, and actually if they're in their own neighborhood, they can get very vocal, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because they feel safe. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, well, look, I, hey, look, I voted for you. you. You cut that stuff off tomorrow. That doesn't solve the problem. You see what I mean? We got a lot of folks out here that, that we got to get this resolved one way or the other. These were hardworking Americans at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks exactly. who are sitting in houses today uh, are kind of like one paycheck, if you will, from from being homeless themselves. See, and we we got to get in, get in get, we got to really get down to the meat and butters and meat and potatoes. What do we do with people that are going to be coming in right now? Mm -hmm. Are you guys prepared? And well, what are you, what are you going to do? 
Well, we prepare to continue to educate them. We prepare to continue to advocate for them and and teach them to the authorities. Uh, to the authorities, yeah. And 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 we we prepare to bring this country. We this country should be for the people, but not for the powers to be. And that's where it changed. It took out the people's hand and put it into the politicians and the developers and the businesses. Lying, they the one that run this country now. And the people just going okay because. They keeping us separated and saying this, you know, by developing separatism, you keep people from banding together, finding out they have a common cause and they should come and fight each other. Mm -hmm. But I can't be with you because you wear glasses, yeah, I wear yeah, sunglasses, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's a separate yeah, thing. Yeah, that's a stereotype, yeah. and that's what people need to stop doing. Again, I said they need to stop putting their differences behind them and move forward. Right. Right. Well, like, like I said, and 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 we do have the we call in the houseless community. Most people do work, but they just can't afford it. And if you're working, you're still paying taxes. So you're paying taxes to live on the street to get criminalized, mm -hmm. so you can work poor. Mm -hmm. that now, don't, now, like I said, now you do understand <laughs> a lot of people who may have worked to get their houses, yeah, if mm -hmm. you will, can barely make their rent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, if in all due respect. This entity over here, we're going to provide these houses, mm -hmm. but we're going to tax you more money, and then I'm going to lose my house. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying yeah. that that's what's out there. That's why yeah. I say, that's why I said when we elect these individuals, it's their job to, mm -hmm. to complete what you shared. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, they got to provide the house. You need, we need the housing. Mm -hmm. Okay? They should know how, who's working, who's not mm -hmm. working, what are they going to do to pay, how mm -hmm. much are they going to pay, mm -hmm. and then are the people who are going to have to be paying the bill, this little extra money aspect of it, mm -hmm. you may have to say, okay, fine, seniors won't be paying this tax. So-and-so mm -hmm. won't be paying this tax. Or so-and-so won't be paying this tax. We're going to delay this tax for some of them. Corporate, we want you to jump into the deal. We may mm -hmm. give you another little write-off for your taxes a bit. Mm -hmm. But my point is that we need to organize it, not, quote, like you said, some of the kids are doing those houses over here. Somebody's doing the little houses over here. Somebody's saying, a uh, 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 politician is saying, well, we're going to try five, five houses for $75,000 apiece. And, you know, and it, it's really, somebody's got to be, that means the chairman of Metro, <laughs> uh, uh, and I know, I know Deb to a certain degree, but <laughs> sometimes they don't answer my phone. Got me? And then we got, we got our famous mayor, you know, Wheeler. I mean, I, I I don't go down to City Hall for that three minutes. It takes two people for a conversation. Mm -hmm. This three minute stuff, it, it frustrates. He don't realize he's just adding fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. You don't do that kind of stuff. If anything, if you wanna if you wanna listen to what the people say, well, guess what? You set aside the whole day to have people come in there and talk, and let them keep talking until you get all of the deal aspect of it. And not just him, but the rest of those commissioners. He's running as if he's going to run the whole deal and all he has to do is just, you know, sign something. Well, I don't get the law and all he has to do is just, it don't work that way. So my point is, is that what I'm getting out of the show today, and that's what I'm telling the folks now, mm -hmm. to the voters. Okay. Look, they've taken it up to this particular point. You've taken it to this point. And, and, and you pretty well know, you know who's on the street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If anything, they could just give you a contract, you guys a contract, <laughs> and tell you to go down there and count them all up, okay? Because we need to know that, okay? Yeah. And even yeah. have a long form, because you're the only one that can talk to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you, you don't hire an outside consultant and pay him a million bucks, <laughs> and he's going he's gonna to just give you some numbers, you got me, that he picked up at some other agencies or whatever. <laughs> See, so the, so the name of the game is that you brought it up to this particular point, and hopefully the voters will call their elected officials Call the let and tell people about the shows. It, it comes back on again. But tell them about what's going on right here. It's not their responsibility. It's, it's the elected official's responsibility. They're our employees aspect of it. And right up front, with, and if you don't ask them, then they got to try to come up with their own creation. And most of them have never been homeless. Mm -hmm. Okay? So so I, so I want to make sure that we, we get that point. That, well, we got about seven more minutes. and. And so this is, we, we got to do this again. Yeah. yeah. You got one <laughs> lasting point? Go yeah, on. we got an a upcoming event, a yes. uh, pitch a tent event. Uh, pitch a tent. Pitch a tent. June 9th at 10.30 in the morning to June 10th at 10.30. We're going to have guest speakers. We're going to have entertainment, food. We're going to have a mock hearing called the Right to Rest Act Bill, which gives people right to rest without being criminalized. And this, when this was put on by Right to Survive, because we found out that the city give a permit for people to put tents on the street 
to watch and wait to sleep and party whatever and wait for the parade the rose festival the next day as a mean of recreation but when a houseless person who have no shelter nothing can't put put a tent up they come snatch their tent down criminalize them throw them in jail mm. give them a fine mm. so as you can see it is differences in the social status why do you allow people who live in houses to put tent up and people who don't have no place can't put a tent up and so this is a direct action and we invite everybody out there to come and talk to the different organizations you're going to have street roofs the sort of rose cafe you're going to have the ambassador program you got right to survive right to dream too you're going to have uh, uh, pair uh, outside the frame, who else? United Oregon. United Oregon. Whole bunch uh, of folks. Whole bunch. Is there of a folks. phone number that they can call? They can call us at five zero three eight three nine 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 two. Again, five zero three eight three nine 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 two. And the date? We'll go, uh, June 9th, uh, uh, two thousand twenty to June tenth. And uh, we're gonna ha uh -huh. seventh address. Address. Uh, it's gonna be fourth and Northwest Washington. And uh, Israel Bear is going to be our keynote speaker, and Mike Crenshaw. And if they bring their the tent and put it there, are they going to get arrested? They, they won't get arrested. Arrest. <laughs> they won't get arrested. Make sure you arrested. let them know. They're not the going to get arrested. first year, it was okay. two and a half block. Last year, it was ten and a half block. We okay, decided okay, to yeah, take but, up but more. After those two days, that's it, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not legal no more. So you can't stay there either. You can't, you can't, stay, that, you can't, see, you can't yeah. stay there 24 yeah. hours a day. You want to bring socks, clothes, and stuff you okay. don't wear, okay. food, come on down. But, you know, in all due respect, i got about another minute aspect. Yeah. That you got to come back. You know, I will. We'll set something up yeah. because it's very important to do this now, yeah. mm -hmm. right before this deal here. So I'm, I'm saying two, week, two weeks out, you know, you okay. put, some, put some folks together. Yeah, and I would we'll, like, we'll go I would to like next Brian point. Cruz to speak. And, get, and get this show, as yeah. one would say, make sure you spread the word out about the show. Yeah. About the kid in the time, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about okay. that. Okay. But it's really been a pleasure. Lisa, Ruthie, nice <laughs> my, my friend, Barack, you're the man, man, okay? Yeah. Thank so you. the name of the game, thank you all very, very thank much. You for I, think, you. I think we learned something. Yeah. But it's going to take more than that. we got to really keep the pressure going. And out. also, they can go to right to survive pds.org. That's right to it. survive. Right to survive dot org. Right, uh, right to survive dot org, and yeah. you'll get a whole uh, array of, of what they've done in the past and kind of re revisit. <laughs> but we're going to do this show again, and yeah. we're going to talk a little bit more about because there's a lot of things going. But that's the what we're going to have to do. Okay. All okay. right. Thank, Thank you, you very much for Thank being you. with us. Appreciate that Thank very much. You. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Now you can enjoy awesome. that sun, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to live the American there dream. There you go. I want that point .5 child, I got you. man. We'll be I like rich. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. See you Thank next you week. Enjoy, care. please. And, uh -huh. hey, if you can do anything, let's see if we can help some of these folks. Get some. You can help them by calling your elected officials and tell them to get, get the work done, okay? Very important. Right to live. Very important. <laughs>